I don't think it takes a genius to realize that aging is a disease by definition. If you look up in the medical dictionaries what a disease is, uh, it's a condition that results in a deterioration of function um, and that can eventually lead to death. Um, and that's exactly what aging is. But for some reason, I think historical reasons, psychologically as well, we put it in a different category. And it turns out that the, the dividing line is simply just how many people get that disease. If something happens that's horrible over time to less than 50% of the population, we call it a disease and we try hard to treat it. We sometimes we give it names like a syndrome, but if it happens to more than 50% of us, let's say even if it's just 50.5, uh, we call that aging. Uh, and that's just a total arbitrary cutoff. We can talk about the mean lifespan, the average lifespan and the maximum. And we've done a very good job of preventing infections and death during childbirth and limiting wars. So the, the average lifespan has gone up dramatically uh, and continues to go up almost every year with the exceptions of uh, wars around 1918 and 2020. Uh, but that line will continue to go up, but the maximum has not. There've always been very old people around, uh, you know, probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years ago. Uh, we know of one person who lived to 122, even though that's even now debated, but around 117, 118, we, we reach our maximum men a little earlier, a few years earlier. Uh, and we haven't been able to push past that barrier. And some people say we never will. Uh, what I say is there are plenty of species that live longer than us, uh, and they're not so biologically different than us. Some of them are warm blooded and have offspring and, and uh, they've only been separated by us, uh, from us by a, a fraction of a second in geological time. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not a biological barrier to living longer. We just need to understand what's going on in them. Let's say the bowhead whale is a good example or a tortoise uh, and apply that to us, uh, either using gene therapies or other types of medicines that could give us what they have and we lack. What I write about uh, in Lifespan is a new theory that's, you know, even since I written, wrote the book, um, has taken on a life of its own in the scientific field, which is uh, exciting and rewarding. And that's the idea that our bodies have certain types of information. You know, we live in the information age, so this is no longer so hard to talk about and conceive of. The two types of information, one's digital, which is DNA. The other is analog, which is the control systems of that DNA. Think of it as the software of the body. And what I'm proposing is that it's a glitch in the software, uh, mm -hmm. not the actual code, which is the DNA, which is good news, uh, potentially good news, because if there's a reset switch that allows you to reboot the system, uh, I mean, how many of us uh, just turn to switching the computer on and off and restarting and it works perfectly again, uh, get rid of that blue screen. So aging is like a blue screen. And I, I think there might be a reset switch that allows our bodies to be young again, that would A, uh, allow us to not just prevent, but treat diseases that are currently impossible to treat, uh, but B, also uh, allow us, our bodies to function like they're young again uh, and literally be young again so that we don't get heart disease and Alzheimer's. And the interesting idea, if, if that's true, if you can reset the body and you have, for example, Alzheimer's disease, does it just go away? Um, and I'm willing to bet that it does. You know, I, I, I jokingly say when I give lectures uh, to younger audiences, uh, med students at Harvard, uh, for example, that uh, DVDs and CDs are these old fashioned things that we used to put movies on and photos and <laughs> I get a chuckle. I think most people know what I'm talking about. The, the, the analogy works because the DVD has the digital system, which is, are the, the zeros and ones, the pits in the foil. And uh, that's like our genome. Our genome isn't zeros and ones, it's four chemicals, A, T, C, G for short, but it is, it is digital. Uh, it's base four, not base two um, based. And so what we can think of is that this digital format 
uh, is the information that we inherit from our parents, genetics. But there's another form of information which we call epigenetics, which in the cell are the systems that read the genes correctly. Uh, but in the DVD analogy, it's the reader of the DNA of the DVD. So that, you know, remember you have to have a blue laser that reads the DVD. Um, and that's analog, right? It's, it still has to move around. It's not digital. Uh, at least the, the machinery isn't. And it can get screwed up a number of ways. So the, the laser little uh, uh, device can break down. But I also like to think of aging as scratches on the DVD so that the reader cannot read the information correctly. And that's what I think is happening similarly in uh, the body where we still have most of our genes that are intact in our body, in our cells, but the body doesn't read them correctly. And that is a breakdown in the epigenetic information.